Hello, my name is Rickard, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you five things that you can do with the Generative Fill Tool in Photoshop. Last week, I did a tutorial on how to install the Photoshop beta and how to use the Generative Fill Tool. You can check that out here. What I want to do in this tutorial is show you five things that you can do with the General Fill Tool that I haven't seen covered in a lot of other tutorials. So first, make sure you have Photoshop Beta. And if you want to follow along using the same images that I use in this tutorial, I have included a link in the description of this video where you can download all of them. Otherwise, let's dive into Photoshop. All right, let's go to File Open. And in the Assets, there's a Blend folder. We're going to go ahead and select both images in there and hit Open. You're going to see we have an image of some mushrooms and an image of an ice cream. And what I want to do is I want to create an image of a mushroom ice cream. So what we're going to do is we're going to go first to our mushroom image and click on Select Subject down here in the taskbar. If you don't see this taskbar, you can go up to Window and then go down here to Contextual Taskbar. I've actually assigned a shortcut to mine. And I would always recommend that you do that as well. It just makes it easier to turn it on and off if you don't want it around. All right, so let's go ahead and click on Select Subject. And you'll notice that the taskbar moved as soon as it made the selection. And that's because the taskbar is kind of designed to sit under whatever you're working on. But personally, I work on the whole canvas at once. So I prefer to have it just stay down here. So I'm going to move it back to where it was and then go to these three dots and click on pin bar position. That'll keep it locked where it is. All right, so to our selection here, you can see that it did an okay job here where there's a lot of contrast, but around here, it did not do a great job. Now, before I go try to manually do this, what I want to do is see if the cloud select subject is going to have better results. So let's click on that and then go make a new select subject. And you can see that that did a really good job compared to the computer select subject. So let's work with this. And what we're going to do here is go here and go to select and mask. That'll bring us to the select and mask workspace. I'm going to click on this view here. And I want to just make this edge not so ragged. So we're just going to turn up the radius here. And you can see that looks a bit better. I'm also going to just shift this edge inside by about 10%. Just try to get rid of that green fringing around those edges. And then we'll hit OK. Then I'm going to do Command C, select my ice cream document and do command V. All right, let's move this and I'm going to do command T for transform and just place this so that it looks like these mushrooms are growing out of our ice cream here. Something like that. And the next thing I need to do is I need to adjust the color of my mushrooms so that they better match with my ice cream here. So I'm going to do Command M. That'll bring up my curve. And the first thing I need to do is just make it lighter. You can see that the shadows here are far darker than any of the shadows in here. So let's just bring up the bottom of our curve. And then we can even it out here so it's not overblown. Something like this. And then I'm also going to go to my reds. And you can see that we have too much cyan in our shadows. So that's going to be affected in the red area here. So what I'm going to do is just with my pen here, I'm going to try to add some red in the shadows. And that should take out some of that cyan. You can see there it's a little much, but if we just turn this back onto this mode instead of the pencil, we can kind of even that out a little bit like that. And then I'm going to go to green. And the opposite of green is magenta. You can see we have too much magenta 
in our highlights here. So again, I can go to the pencil to just try to target this one specific area and then put this and that'll kind of give me the dots there and I can smooth it out a bit. So something like that. And then I'm also going to add a little bit of yellow. Something like this, and then maybe just a little bit more red in the highlights. So something like that. There's the before and after. You can see that matches our ice cream far better. Let's hit OK. All right, the next step is we're going to select the mushrooms and the ice cream. What we want to do is get these to kind of melt together. So we're going to go here, select this. like that. And then here we're just going to hit on generative fill and hit on generate. Now even though it gave us one generation here you can see that it erred and that's because we're using the beta and the beta does have a bug where it will falsely trigger it, a violation of the guideline even when it's not a violation. So we could just leave it with this. Um, but I do want to show you a solution if you run into that problem. So let's just go ahead and delete this layer. And if we just had the violation error and we're going to try to do this again, what I would do here is just go into the prompt area and just explain what is on the screen. So here I'm going to say ice cream with mushrooms. So essentially I'm trying to give it as little of a prompt as possible so that it just uses the contextual information to fill in this part of the image. But you can see that it's now trying to add mushrooms and that's not at all what I want. So maybe here we can try just typing in ice cream. And that did a much better job. Let's look here. So I think that one actually looks quite good. What I might do is leave this as my starting point, and then I'm just going to select a few of these two dark areas where the shadow just is too dark for the scene. And then here, I'm going to put in ice cream. And I think these all look better than what we had before. Kind of like this one. I like the fact that it's giving us a little bit of transparency into our background there. So let's keep that, and then maybe I'll just do one more, try to get something a little nicer in this area here. And I think this one looks good, so let's leave that. So now we have our ice cream with mushrooms growing out of it. Um, the last thing we can do here is just kind of recrop. So we'll do C for the crop tool. Make this a little bit bigger. And then I'm going to go to my background layer, select subject, do command J to put that on its own layer. And then here I'm going to add a solid color layer. We'll just pick a color that kind of goes with this. Maybe something like this. Okay, the next thing I want to do is just knock this out of the transparency. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take all the layers that make up my ice cream, put those in a folder with Command G. We can call this ice cream. And I need to add transparency here. So once this is all in a folder, I can add a mask to that folder. Go in here. 
and just make a selection of this. And then with my mask selected, I'm going to do command delete and that will fill it in with black. And then I can add a little bit of feather there. I think that looks good. And then the last thing I might want to do is just add a vignette to this. So I'm going to go to my elliptical marquee tool, make an elliptical marquee. And then I'm going to go here and go to curves. And here, I'm just going to pull this down, make my curve darker like this, go to my mask properties, invert my mask, and then add about 300 pixels of feather like so. And then I can always, if I want, make this vignette darker. And I can also do Command T because my original selection was that circle. I can now control the size of that circle here. Okay, and then the very last thing is we need to fill in this part of the arm. I'm going to do that with the generative fill tool. So I'm just going to go like this and then we'll type in arm. And I think that one looks good. I don't want the extra part of the arm there. So I'll go here and just get rid of that in the mask. So that uses the generative fill tool to help you blend two images. The next thing I want to show you is how you can add contextual information and then use that to help the AI get better results. All right, so we're going to go to File, Open, and in the folder called Context, I'm going to go ahead and select both images and hit Open. And if we go to the Sherman Yang image, you're going to see this drone footage of a long pier. And what I want to do is I want to create an image where there's large koi fish inside the ocean here. And obviously koi fish at this distance from the ocean would be completely impossible to see. But I think that that juxtaposition of really large koi fish would look kind of cool. So let's first take our lasso tool and we're just going to make some selections kind of about the size that I want the koi fish to be. And here we're going to say koi fish in the water and then hit generate. Okay, so not a bad job although the koi fish are a little bit fat. But overall, not a terrible job, although it doesn't look very much like they're in the water. So let's go ahead and turn that layer off for now. And here's what I want to show you. And this is a trick of simply adding context to your image before doing your generative fill. So here what I want to do is go to my select subject. I'm going to go to the cloud, click on select subject. And that did a pretty good job. Now what I'm going to do is just intersect this selection. So I just have these uh, fish right here. So we'll go here, hold down option and shift. That'll bring up the intersect. And then we'll just select around these three fish here. And then I'm going to do Command C and Command V. And then we'll make these bigger. And then I also want to push these into the water a bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click here, bring up my blending options. And under the blend if down here, what I want to do is hold down option and just kind of bring this to the right a bit until those fish start looking like they're a bit under that water there. So something like that. I'm going to hit OK. And then let's go ahead and make these selections again. 
But what we'll do is we'll revise them and just kind of go around where we've added these with a few more shapes. So we'll do this, this, and this. And then here we'll say exactly the same command, koi fish in water, and then hit generate. And you can see that those actually look more like they're in the water like these. And if we scroll through, and that one is quite close. But as you can see, giving the image some context helped the AI in determining what you want in the rest of the image. Now, this is not doing a great job, but this tool is in beta and it will get better and better. And I have found that the more context you give the tool, the better results you're gonna get. The next thing I wanna show you is how you can use the generative fill tool in your workflow to create fake depth of field. Let's go back into Photoshop. All right, let's go back to file open and in our assets folder, we're gonna go to the folder called DOF which is a reference to depth of field. And what I wanna do here is I wanna show you how you can use the generative fill to change the depth of field of a photo you've already taken. So here you can see uh, this image is very, um, the focus is very deep, meaning even these mountains here, even though they're starting to get a little bit blurry, they're actually almost all in focus. And also you can see our foreground almost right up to where we are is in focus. So this image is heavily in focus. Now it's a great image, but if we want to change this to be a more soft focus where our subject really sticks out from the background, we may want to blur this image. So. In the past, the way we would do this is selecting him. And just to make sure we have the best result, I'm gonna go ahead and do the cloud detailed result again. So we have him selected. We're gonna do Command J and put him on his own layer. Now, if I take this background layer and start to blur it, and I'm just gonna do a Gaussian blur so you can see the problem that we're gonna run into is we're gonna have this halo effect around him because he is behind there when you are blurring the image. And the more you blur, the more this halo is gonna become apparent. And it's just, it looks very obvious that this blurring was done in post. So let's cancel here and let's show us, uh, I'm gonna show you how to fix this with generative fill. So first, what we're going to do is get rid of him. So I'm going to click on my lasso tool and select all around him. And because I actually already have a selection of him, I can just command click on him and then go here to ex expand selection by 10 pixels. And then hold down shift. So I'm adding to my selection. I just want to add the reflection as well. Otherwise, the generative fill will factor in this reflection and try to add something that makes sense with this reflection. I don't want that. I want it to get rid of all of this. So I'm going to hit generative fill. I'm going to leave this blank and hit generate. Okay, but there you can see it did a really good job of cutting him out of the background. And now we have our character here. The other thing I do want to do, however, is I do want to have the reflection in my background. So what I'm gonna do here is take these two layers and combine them with Command E so that I have just one layer. And then I'm going to make a copy of this background layer, put it above, and then I want to just retain if I turn this off, I want to just retain what's under him here. So I'm going to go ahead and add a mask to this. And then select just this area here. 
like so. I'm going to make sure I have enough around it so that if I need to feather the selection, I can. So something like this, and then we will invert here and then just fill this part of the mask with black. So like this. And actually, there's not really a seam there. So I think we're OK. We can use this as our new background. So this will be our background. And then now that I have him nicely separated, what I can do is go to Filter, Blur Gallery, and do a Tilt Shift. And what I want to do is I want to line up the in focus point to right where his legs meet the ground here. And then I'm going to pull this in real close, pull this one in real close to about there, and then we can pull this to about there and there. And then now here we have full control of our depth of field. We don't get that blurring effect. This really looks like you're adjusting the f-stop inside your camera. Um, so you have this beautiful control of your depth of field. And also with this tool, you can actually even add some bokeh, some like light bokeh if you want. Um, it's an option. I, you know, I probably wouldn't for this image, but if you're doing a nighttime shot, you can get some nice bokeh in there. But that's the basic of the trick. If you separate out the subject from the background, use a generative fill, and then you can use this blurring effect to make a very shallow depth of field to a photo that you took that doesn't particularly have that much depth of field. So here you can see the before and the after. That looks very realistic. The next thing I want to show you is how you can use intensity or the strength of your initial selection and how you can use that to better blend your generative fill with your existing image. OK, let's go to File, Open, and in our Assets folder, we're going to go to the folder called Intensity. And let's open the file in there. So here, what I want to do is I want to put a woman frozen inside this ice. So if I just select here kind of where she's going to be and hit generative fill and type in woman under woman frozen under the ice and hit generate. You can see that it's basically created an entirely new image that has no relation to my existing ice background. So how to fix this? Let's go ahead and throw away this. And what you can do is you can actually adjust the intensity of your selection, which is essentially the opacity of your section, meaning how much you have selected. Um, if you're familiar with Photoshop, you know that selections don't have to be 100% you can select something by degrees. So if I hit Q on the keyboard or click on this, you get a channel here, the quick mask channel, which shows you how much of something is selected. So if it's 100% selected, you're going to see it as white here and as fully transparent here. But if I, for example, added a mask, so I'm doing a mask on the quick mask and start moving this down, you can see that now this is 50% gray on my mask, which means my selection is 50%. And anything under this starts to go under 50%. When you hit OK, this is now less than 50% selected. So now if I hit Q again, because there are no more pixels, more than 50% selected, it's not going to show me the running ants. However, there is a selection there. And as you can see, the generative fill does show up. And that's because I do have a selection. So I'm going to click here and then type in again, woman frozen under the ice, and then hit generate. 
And you can see now that it's actually retained my original image or elements of my original image. And it's trying to add it within the context of this. Now you can see it's really struggling to do that. So what I want to do is I want to show you another way that you can do this, especially with an image like this, but it'll also get your imagination going in terms of how to use this intensity. So let's go ahead and throw this away. And generally, if you're looking at this and there was a person under the ice, you would see them in the darker areas here because these lighter areas are refracting light and are less transparent than these darker areas. So if I go to my channels and let's look at our various ones, and you can see that the red probably is the best representation of light and dark. So if I do command and then click on the red, I've now made a selection of all the light areas, but I wanna select the dark areas. So I'm gonna click on this, that'll invert my selection, and then I'm gonna go here and type in the same prompt, Woman frozen under the ice. Let's hit generate. And you can see here that it's actually done an interesting job to try to keep this intact and actually put her under the ice that we had. So for example, if we took this one, this one looks pretty nice. And then we could take our original layer, make a copy of it, put it above, and then maybe change the blend if so that we start showing her underneath. So maybe something like this. And you can just see how by doing that, using that intensity trick, this is much more interacting with our image and allows us to create effects that are more realistic. All right, the next thing I want to show you is how you can create a seamless background or a seamless pattern using generative fill. Let's go back into Photoshop. All right, let's go to file open. And the last folder in our assets is seamless. Let's go ahead and open the two images that are in there. And we'll start with this image. It's a little bit large, so let's go to image size. We're just gonna make this a bit smaller. So first, let's change this to pixels, and we're just gonna cut this in half to 8,000 and hit OK. And what I wanna do here is I want to be able to use this as a 360 environment. So the only way to do that is I have to make sure that this is seamless because right now, as it crosses from here to here, obviously it's not gonna work. But with generative fill, we can easily solve this problem. So first let's go to filter and I'm gonna go to other and then offset. And here our document is 8,000 pixels wide, so 4,000 is half of that. Let's do 4,000. That'll put our seam right here in the middle. Now I can just select the seam and probably just make sure I don't have like right in the middle of a house selected, so probably somewhere like this. And then make sure I have enough so that it can make a smooth transition between everything hit generative fill, and then just hit generate. And let's look at the options it gave us. This one looks really good. So I really like this one. Um, on the surface, this really looks like just one image. Now the great thing about this is I'm gonna go ahead and merge these two. And if we go back to our filter offset, you can see that no matter where we move this, there's never gonna be there's never gonna be a seam in this image. And I have a course called The Great Abyss. And if you've done that course or if you're interested in creating that kind of composite, using this trick will actually save you 
a good 10 or 15 minutes of compositing and blending time that I cover in that course. So this is a really great uh, time saving tr trick for when you need to create a, a seamless image like this, whether it's for 3D or for that type of composite. And the other thing that you can use this for is making patterns. So here, what I want to do is I want to create a pattern of brick that's seamless. So the first thing is I need to make sure that it is straight because I do notice this is a little bit unstraight. So I'm going to just do a command J to put this on a new layer. And then I'm going to do a transform here, make this a little bit bigger and then start rotating it. Try to get all these bricks so that they line up nicely. You can see here we still have this side. So I'm gonna hold down Command and maybe just skew this a little bit as well. And I think that's pretty good. So let's do that. And then I also wanna make this a square so let's go to canvas size and let's make our width the same. Okay, so we now have a square. The next thing I wanna do is go to my filter and go to our offset and let's offset this by 2000. And okay, so we want to crop this and we want to make sure we delete the crop pixels. That way when we're moving it, it moves all the way to the edge and it's not taking into account these extra pixels. So let's hit OK and then let's go back to our offset and do 2000 and it should land in the middle now. There you go. All right, and then we're going to select this part here, and then do our generative fill. And then we will merge those with Command E, and then go to Offset. And this time we're going to leave this at zero and make the vertical 2000. And then we'll select this middle area here where the seam is type in generative fill and generate. Okay, and then we'll merge those and then we'll do one final check, make sure that this offset did not get ruined. And it looks like we have a little bit of a line right here to fix. We'll just select that little portion there and then hit generative fill. And we can merge that and then select and then do edit, define pattern, call this brick. And now if we go to our pattern and select our brick, because we made sure that this was seamless, if I put this to 50, you can see I can still use it. It doesn't have any seams. Now, obviously you can't go too far because you're gonna start seeing repeating bricks, but when you're making a pattern, this is a great way of making sure that it's seamless, extremely valuable if you're doing any type of 3D textures or material work as well. So there you have it. Those are five tricks for using the generative fill tool in Photoshop. Hopefully you can see how you can incorporate this tool into your workflow and use it to help you speed up your efficiency and getting the results that you want in Photoshop. 
Now, if you enjoyed this tutorial, please subscribe to my channel. I do come out with videos like this almost every week. And also, if you're interested in accelerating your learning in Photoshop and really get to the point where you can charge people, make money, and make a living in Photoshop, check out Nucli.com. I've got a whole bunch of professional training as well as tools and assets that you can use in Photoshop to bring your imagination to life, get the results that you want. So check that out. Otherwise, here's some other tutorials that you can check out. I will see you next time.